Welcome y'all. This is part two of a four part series where I am going to attempt to help anyone that is interested in wood burning or formerly known as pyrography. If you are new and you do not have any equipment or material and you're not sure where to start, go ahead and go to my first video. I cover all that in there. That might help you. Then you can come back to this video and be caught right up to us. What's up y'all? My name is Andy. This is Epius Garage and I'm happy to help y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoy it. I do want to say I am giving away free stickers still. I got a ton of them. All you have to do is send me an empty envelope with your address and the postage on it. And just put that in another envelope and I will put stickers in it and I will send it back to you. You don't need to put a note or anything in it. Notes are cool though, but you don't have to put anything in it. I'll send you the stickers back. P.O. Box is in the description. Let's get started. First thing, when I find an image that I like, I save it on my phone in an album that's specifically for pyrography. Are you curious what we're going to be transferring today? Because whatever we transfer today, it's going to be the one I burn in real time and in time lapse for you in part four. We'll go through the entire thing. I'll show it all to you. It might be a longer video, but I'm going to do a lot of it in time lapse, speed it up and stop in the key points when I'm doing stuff that you need to know about. So that will be this image that we transfer today. When I'm ready to burn an image, first thing I do is I get it up on the computer and I play with the light and darkness depending on the image. Sometimes you make it a little lighter so that way when you print it, you have more detail. Sometimes it's darker. Um, sometimes I even print it in black and white. Essentially, you're going to be burning in black and white, well, black and wood color, but black and white sometimes helpful too. Sometimes I'll print multiple. I'll print a black and white, a darker, and a color one that way because what we put on the material is going to be very basic there's not going to be any detail so you are going to use those pictures to apply your detail to your piece okay let's see what we got This one is gonna be fun, I promise. So make sure you stick around. Let me explain to you why I chose this image to burn and show you how to burn using this image. One, it's got good eyes. Eyes are one of my favorite things to burn. You'll be burning an image and it'll look like uh, this thing ain't gonna turn out and you do the eyes and it's like, wow, it just came to life in front of your eyes. So I wanted to show you all that. Another reason, it's got dark areas. This is a lot lighter than what it will be when we burn it, more than likely, depending on how we feel and how we go down this rabbit hole. But I like to burn these big dark areas using a special technique, and I'm gonna show you what that technique is. It'll save you a lot of time where you're not taking your pen and slowly burning these huge areas of darkness. This one also has liquid in it. The saliva coming from his mouth, I wanted to show y'all how to do that. Anytime you can put water in your burn image, it looks really cool and really pops. I recently did a Jason and it looked pretty cool. It's one of my better pieces that I've done. It sold actually instantly. People were showing up to my booth to buy it that morning and the next person showed up for it. It was sold and they ended up commissioning me to do it again, which I normally don't do, but if it's a commission, I'll do it and it always looks different anyway so each one is still unique another reason is it doesn't fit the material we'll be using we'll be using six and a half or sorry seven and a half by nine and a half and it doesn't fit it's a little bit skinnier and it's longer i'm going to show you tricks of how to fill up your space where you're not literally burning the image and it looks like a clean line on your board and blank space around it. It's not necessary to do that. And lastly, I'm a horror buff, y'all. I love horror movies. Uh, this particular It wasn't my favorite. It was good, but I love horror movies, which Halloween was all year. I've actually done Halloween specials. If you like Halloween too, I have a whole playlist of just Halloween videos that I've done. So feel free to go check that out. Let's get it on the wood now. First thing you need is some pencils. I generally use two pencils. A number two regular pencil, sharp and well, an eraser not really going to need the eraser, and a 0 0.07 mechanical pencil for the fine details. First thing I like to do is using my razor knife, I cut out the image. I cut out all the white 
bordering exactly what I want on my material is what I cut out. Then I kind of want to get an idea of how I'm going to place it on my material. This is right before cutting out your carbon. I order my carbon paper off of Amazon and of course like everything y'all I will link where I buy it and you can just go to the description and order this if you like. Um, but from there I cut the carbon to my image size. Now I'm going to place the carbon where I want it on my material and place the image over it. I like to use masking tape and what I do is I tear off a little bit and I tear it in little pieces and I place it strategically. What I mean by strategically is I try to place it in spots where there's going to be shading or where there's not any detail that I'm going to have to trace over. Um, usually not an issue, but that's where I place my masking tape. Then from there, I flip it over and I cut the excess off to match the final piece and finish taping it. When tracing your image, you don't have to try to get every single little detail. Um, instead, concentrate on the dark areas, concentrate on key features, features that are gonna kind of be a reference where something is because you're gonna keep this picture and you're going to utilize it to actually put all the detail in later and i'll show you that but um i don't put all the detail in there key things like uh, maybe where the saliva is maybe where dark lines are also remember any shaded areas if you mark them too deep you may not be shading them that dark with your wood burner so then your carbon's still going to show through I'm gonna show you a trick to how to erase the carbon off your material later, but sometimes it's hard to remove. So you gotta think about that too. And I'm just gonna lift it up, make sure that I've got all the key spots. Um, and you can also hold it sideways and kind of see your pencil marks in the light. And if you're missing anywhere, you can go ahead and touch it up. That paper off. Don't need the carbon paper anymore. Keep this. And there we go. Real basic, not a lot of detail. The detail will come from this and you'll transfer it over. As I showed you, I stayed away from detail, but I made key points. Like for instance, where we're gonna do some drool and stuff, just little circles and stuff, just to kind of give me reference of where those are gonna be based off the picture. Everything's for reference. In my next video, part three, I'll be covering secrets and tips, things that I use. We will not be burning this yet. However, I might be burning on some other wood to show you stuff. One thing missing from this that I really wanted to show y'all was hair, There's no hair in this particular image. So in the next video, I may show some different hair examples on how to do basic hair. Um, hair sometimes can be difficult. I still have difficulty with it. I'm not a pro, but I'll show you what I know. I hope to see you all in the next video. If you liked it, remember, please hit that like and subscribe. And if you want notifications, you got to hit that little bell down there. And that'll give you notifications as long as they're turned on on your phone. I'll see you all in the next video.